Everyone, welcome to the Pim Pin Podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker and I'm a network designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. You can find me on Instagram as Pip and Pin, on Ravelry as Knit Pip and Pin, and in the Ravelry group. Uh, today is January 17th and it is episode 46. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, lots of knit along stuff, some giveaway stuff, some knitting stuff. <laughs> works in progress um, and things like that usually what I chatter on about if you're new to the podcast um, thank you so much for coming and checking us out and if you're returning thanks for coming back I have quite a bit of kind of knit along stuff to talk about so I'm just going to dive right in and start chatting about that the first knit along that I want to talk about is the Rainforest Knit Along and that's being held over in our Ravelry group, uh, the link of which is down in the description box below. And um, that one was for our latest book, Rainforest Knits, as well as the Cat Bells and Mema, our two um, sweater patterns that were released in 2019. And that one's coming to a close. Um, the end is January 20th. So I think you have until the end of this weekend, maybe Monday to get your entries in. Um, and I will be drawing a winner the next time I podcast. <laughs> well, I'll be announcing the winner on next time I podcast. Anyways, um, we had some really, really lovely entries. Um, this was a sweater, like all of the things in there were sweaters. So I, um, I just want to say thank you for everyone who entered. Um, there were some really beautiful things there and I just want to show, share what the prize is going to be. We're going to have one prize um, from the finished object thread, which I'll be drawing for when it officially closes. So if you're close to finishing or if you have it finished and you just haven't posted it to Ravelry yet, make sure you do that. Uh, it is going to close soon. Anyways, the prizes for that one, um, the first is beautiful. I mean, they're all lovely prizes. But this was a set of yarn from Sassy Strings Yarn Studio. And it is these three. This is her basic sock base, just 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And it's in the ruby, vanilla cupcake in the middle here, and then slate down at the end, which is this beautiful, beautiful bluey gray. Um, this vanilla cupcake is like a cream base with all these beautiful little speckly bits. And then Ruby is this lovely, lovely deep kind of fuchsia pink. Really nice color. George, George and I, Justin and I have arguments over pink and purple all the time. So I'm always like, is this pink? It's pink. <laughs> Um, and these three schemes were generously donated by the dyer herself. Um, and this is a, a local dyer, local-ish dyer. They're from Airdrie, Alberta, which is just the next province over. So I'd say that is local enough. And I just thought that these were so lovely together that I'm also going to add a copy of this, actually, which is my Wishing Rock shawl. Um, it's one of the new pattern laces I did last week. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So you get those three skeins of yarn, the pattern for this shawl, and then a copy of Making Number Eight, the Forest Edition. And this one was donated by um, 88 Stitches. And um, so this is just a beautiful, beautiful book. It has all different sorts of crafts, not just knitting. Look at that thing. So cute. <laughs> all different kinds of crafts. Um, there is some knitting and some some things in there as well. I think there's some sewing. Um, just looks like a really lovely, it's a, a magazine, but it's, it's a book. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, yeah, so maybe some other things I'll pop in there too. I haven't really decided yet, but probably when I have it together, I'll see what else it needs. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna be the grand prize make sure you get your entries in before the 20th. Um, the second knit along, I'm just gonna pop this over here. 
<laughs> the second knit along we have running right now is the wintertime mini along and that one is basically any pattern you like that utilizes mini skeins or scraps um whatever pattern kind of that uses lots of different yarns um so i have the sprocket socks is a pattern that i released recently if you use that pattern um then you get to enter twice so there's that <laughs> um, and then that one goes all the way until february the 14th um the prizes for that one i'm still kind of collecting things i did get a mini skein set um, I purchased from Autumn and Indigo. Um, I actually got two, so I don't know which one I want to keep and which one I want to give away yet. And then I have a, a, another little thing that I picked up. Um, if you're someone who wants to donate to the podcast, that would be amazing. Um, I always greatly appreciate that. And I love sharing, um, whatever it is that you do on the podcast. I would love to share. Um, so if you, if you, you want to donate, just get in contact with me. That would be wonderful. <laughs> we have this knit along and then um, I, I do want to keep doing knit alongs. Maybe um, once the rainforest one officially ends, I will. I'll start another one. I don't really have any ideas for it yet, but I'm sure something will come up. <laughs> um, that's it for knit alongs right now. But I do have a giveaway. Actually, technically two giveaways. Um, one is going to be here, which I'm going to show you in a second. And one is actually being run on Instagram. And um, it's posted now if you want to go check it out. That one's going to end on the 21st. This one is going to end the next time I film, um, which is usually the end of the week. So next Thursday or Friday, which is, let me check here. I'll get you an actual date. <laughs> the 23rd or 24th, <laughs> somewhere around there. As soon as I film... My next one is when it will end, basically. Anyways, I'm sure you want to know what it's actually for. <laughs> so um, the reason why I wanted to do this is because I was looking at some stuff on Instagram and, and um, YouTube here, and I realized that I'm just about at 2,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and I just wanted to I just wanted to do something. I like doing things. Also, it was the snow was coming uh last weekend so i wanted to get out of the house on saturday so i just took georgia with me to the yarn store because i was like i was just bored <laughs> okay let's go to the yarn store we'll pick up stuff for a giveaway <laughs> anyways um so what it's actually for the winner of the giveaway is going to receive a copy of this which is my rhomboid hat um it's a pattern probably oh it's a couple years old, but it's still one of my favorites. My husband actually stole this sample and wears it every day. <laughs> and I've had many iterations of this hat that were mine as well. So a copy of this pattern, which also includes a digital copy for Ravelry, um, a skein of this brand new Canadian yarn, which is Haynes Creek Heathers. Um, it is a 100% um, pure Highland wool. And it says it's an error in weight, um, but when I was talking to Sue um, at 88 Stitches, she had done a swatch of it, and she said it was kind of closer to a, a worsted. So I think that this hat will go very nicely with this yarn. It might, I mean, it will be a little bit more rustic than the sample because um, it's just a different yarn, but I think that's great. <laughs> and then um, you'll also get these two pom-poms. So I know this doesn't have a pom-pom on it, but all hats need pom-poms. Um, so you have the kind of matchy-match purple one if you want, or this kind of black and white, black and whitey one. So whatever way you want to go, and then you can use the next, the other one for, for something else. So yeah, um, that is what you will win. It is open to everyone. Um, I don't care where you live. <laughs> it's gonna be expensive. I ship from Canada, it's expensive anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, and to enter, all you have to do is in the comments, tell me what your favorite finished object of the year has been, or was of 2019. What was your favorite thing, your most worn, the, your whatever, it doesn't matter what your reasoning is. Just let me know what was your favorite finished object of 2019. And that's your entry. And yeah, I will be drawing the winner 
the next podcast. Uh, and don't forget there is one, a contest running. It's a different pattern and slightly different yarn and slightly different pom-poms, but kind of the same idea over on Instagram. <laughs> I will link to that below. So what else do we got going on today? Um, what I'm wearing. Uh, as I said before, this is my latest pattern that we released. We released it last week. And um, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that has purchased it already. Um, I couldn't be a designer if <laughs> it wasn't for you guys. So thank you very much uh, to everyone who has purchased it. It is probably my favorite style of shawl. It is a, I'll take it off for a second. If you didn't catch it last time, it's a fingering weight shawl. I've used Midnight Cravings Lush. Um, which in, oh, what are the colors? I always forget the colors. They're all flower, kind of petal, wildflower, and secret garden. <laughs> so you knit it side to side in these fun little stripes. And you knit it actually so that it's doubled. So when you wear it, you fold it in half and you have this big squishy fingering weight shawl. Um, because... I like knitting in fingering weight and I like wearing fingering weight, but I don't like fingering weight shawls and I don't like fingering weight shawls that like are giant. I love that they're giant because they're squishy, but um, they, I don't know, like you get the drape of the fingering weight, but you get a little bit of like body because it's doubled. And then also tassels because tassels are amazing. <laughs> So yeah, if you want to go check that out on Ravelry, um, you can use there. I have a code, I have a promotion code that's still valid until January 21st, and that is 25 wish. So if you go on to Ravelry, enter that promo code, you will get 25% off the pattern. That's it. That's it for all the kind of administration stuff. So now I can start talking about some knitting. Um I don't have any finished objects. <laughs> I've kind of been working on, well, I had an accident, <laughs> we'll say. I was doing some, I was cleaning my bathtub and I wanted to get the thing out so that I could clean out the drain. And I got like finger or like paper cuts kind of, well, sheet metal cuts basically, all across my fingertips. <laughs> so, there was kind of not a lot of knitting that I could do, especially on like my socks. I didn't really do much. I couldn't do do them after I hurt myself. And my sweater I could kind of work on, but mostly I could crochet and I played a lot of Sims. <laughs> so I didn't really, um, I honestly didn't do a ton of knitting this week, but they are all healed up. So I should be good to go for next week. Uh, so no finished objects. I do have a half finished object though. So I will share that with you. And that is this guy. This is a new sock pattern that I'm working on. It uses Red Fox Fibers Wild Sock in the Grizzly colorway. And it just is the glowiest, glowiest yarn. And yeah, it's a new, new pattern I'm working on. I'm this far along in the second one. <laughs> it's doing a little bit of it today, but I'm not quite healed enough for how intricate kind of you have to be with it. Uh, but yeah, it's just a top down fish lips kiss heel, which can be substituted for a short row heel. And then um, just a normal wedge toe. And it just has this beautiful little panel. It's just all down the front center and then plain stockinette on the back and on the bottom. I'm really excited about this. I tried, I talked about this last time. I tried really hard to make this yarn into a hat because it was, this was gifted to me and it was gifted with a pom-pom and I had an idea for this hat in my head and it's been in my head since Knit City. I just didn't want to be a hat. <laughs> I didn't want it to be a pair of socks. So that's what I'm doing. And I, I have been working on the pattern because I want to get testing started and I want to get it going, <laughs> but it's been snowing. It's been snowing a lot. Um, so 
a lot for here and not a lot for the world, but <laughs> a lot for Vancouver area. And um, so Justin hasn't been to work all week. So, which is nice, but also I can't work, like I can't work work when, when he's home. And then Georgia also had a snow day on Wednesday. So there hasn't really been a lot um, of work going on. <laughs> Uh, but that I hope to have that, the pattern at least ready for testers in the next little while. And then hopefully, I'd say within a couple months, this one should be released. I know I have got into like a pattern. I was working on a lot of like kind of secrety things and book stuff. And um, now I can start working on other things again, which is nice. So works in progress. I did get quite a bit done before I hurt myself <laughs> of my sweater done. So this is my once in floral sweater and it is by Max and Sear. The yarns I'm using are Knit Pick Stroll Tweed in Wellies Heather, which is the black, um, Oyster Heather, which is the kind of cream, and then Knit Picks Capretta in Ember's Heather, which is the dark red of the roses. And I am really loving how this is turning out. Um, I, the only, the only, <laughs> I was going to say the only modification I've done. Now I modified it a lot, <laughs> not a ton, but I kind of started with the large size and then went down to the medium. And I'm also, you won't, oh yeah, you can kind of see it. I'm also adding a bit of waist, not waist shaping, kind of. Yeah, I guess waist shaping because my waist is super high. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of shaping here just so that I can, like I want it oversized enough to be comfy and like sweatshirty and easy to wear and just put on. I also just want it to look really nice. <laughs> and I find if I just knit straight bodies, I get a, a bit of extra fabric around just here that I just, just in this like side area that makes me look larger than I am. So I just cut that out. That is the great thing about knitting is being able to alter your patterns to suit your body. Um, I'm actually knitting this together with, um, Sam from Hand Me My Knitting, um, because we are going to the, uh, Rose City Yarn Crawl in Portland at the beginning of March. So we figured what, like, as soon as Max came up with this pattern, I fell in love instantly. And then I know Sam fell in love with it too. So he's like, well, we're going to Portland, the Rose City Yarn Crawl, like, let's knit these sweaters. So... We are knitting these sweaters and hopefully they will be done by the time we have to leave. I think it's March 8th or something. So I have about a month, I guess a month and a half now. And I figure if I can finish the body by the end of January, I will be in very good shape to get that done. So, and I have to like, it's a lot of black stockinette, <laughs> which honestly isn't the funnest to knit. But I find if I'm um, really, if I, if I find a show that I'm really interested in, then I can knit it without, like I can pay attention to the show while still knitting. So that's nice or like reading or something. Also, if it's like thrilling, if I'm engaged and like <gasps> what's gonna happen, then that's even better because <laughs> then I knit faster. <laughs> so I've been watching uh, Legion which is really weird, but also very awesome. Justin tries to like, you know, he's like reading a book and then he'll go outside and it'll like, he missed the first six episodes of it basically. And then he's like, what's going on? What's this guy doing? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this show. Like you don't know anything pretty much ever. So he, yeah, he, he just, every time he tries to talk to me about it, I'm just like, no, you, you can't. Like you just have to watch it. <laughs> I can't spend half an hour explaining what may or may just not have happened in the past 15 minutes. I don't know. You just have to watch it if you want to watch it. <laughs> Which annoys him, but it annoys me more. Who's this guy? What's he doing? Just watch the show. <laughs> I'll watch it with you. <laughs> just watch it. <laughs> anyway, so that is, um, that is my once in floral sweater. I'm super excited about it. And then the other thing that I've been working on is I hadn't really picked this up 
in a while since I started it. Surprise, surprise, crochet blanket. This always happens to me every year, but I couldn't really knit, but I could crochet. So I started a, a while ago, around Christmas time, I started the Weekender Blanket, which is by Sandra Paul, and it is a crochet blanket. And but basically you make a million of these teeny tiny little crochet things and then you attach them all together at the end. <laughs> and so I found this awesome little jar that just fits them perfectly. So I've been stacking them up in this little jar and this is how many I have so far. Um, I think you need like, I don't know, I wanna, I want a big one. So I'm gonna need a lot of these, but I have, I'm just using up scraps. I'm holding fingering yarns double or just using DKs and um, scraps from my yarn ink advent calendar. And then I just went through all my yarn. And so I have a whole, I have like a big Ziploc freezer bag full of yarn. And then I also have um, this, which is going into it. And I was kind of talking about this before when I, when I first started it, but I have an issue. <laughs> I've started so many granny stripe blankets and so many like um, kind of join as you go scrappy blankety things. I have a northeasterly that I haven't touched in a year. Um, and I think the problem is I don't like join as you go. Um, I don't mind seaming things together. I don't mind sewing things together. Um, that's not a problem for me, but I really don't like, like I'll get, you know, I'll do this much of a granny straight blanket and I'll love it. And then I'll do this much and I'll hate it. And I'll do this much and I'll like, okay, now it's kind of okay again. And there's the, like, and I just don't end up liking it because I don't want to rip back so much just to change one little thing. And like, I don't want to make colors anymore. And uh, it's a big thing. So I figured with this like modular kind of knitting, if there's something that I don't like, I can just take it out and not put it in the finished thing. Like that's not gonna be a problem. Um, I kind of wanna keep with the, I'm just gonna take them all out. No, I'm just gonna keep them in here. <laughs> I kind of wanna keep it on the lighter side. So, um, and kind of in this muted kind of pastel -y something like I'm not sticking to a specific palette but this kind of feeling we'll say I want it to feel like this but I want it to be on the lighter side so I figured if I keep knitting about half of them white and then half like white-ish like very light like these ones I would all consider white and then ha half or less of like colors or like kind of darkery things then it will then I'll be able to make it what I want. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And it was nice to um, switch from knitting a little bit. I did order, um, it hasn't come yet, but I ordered a tulip crochet hook, which is the ones with the like really springy, like soft handles. So um, I just have a, just a metal one. So I'm going to see how, how that works. I'm excited. I like it. And it's a good use for kind of my scraps. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't use a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm having trouble going through my yarn in this manner, but that's okay. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and those are really the only things that I've been working on. I'm excited for that crochet hook to come so I can try that out. Um, yeah. For um, stash, I did get something because I went to the yarn store with Georgia um because we were bored <laughs> I wasn't just gonna go there I did have something in mind while I went there my friend asked for a gray hat um so I'm gonna knit him one <laughs> and I got myself um some hay heathers and this is color 104 which is just like a dark charcoal gray um and Sue actually told me the story behind this yarn, which is kind of cool. It's a brand new yarn um, made by, oh, I think they're in Alberta. Can't remember. But anyways, she said they, the people who make this, um, it's a couple and they were yarn reps for a really long time. And so they've worked with Sue, um, you know, getting her yarn and, and things like that. And then they retired. Um, 
and then they didn't want to be retired anymore so they started making yarn and she said originally when they had when they had this idea to make the yarn they really wanted it to be all Canadian um but they couldn't do that at a reasonable price like it it would be just not in the price range that they wanted to be at. They wanted to make something that was affordable um, as well as Canadian. And if you live in Canada, you know that's really hard to do. Um, so they did, um, what they do now is they do um, get all the wool in Canada and then they send it to Peru and that's where it gets dyed and it gets spun. Um, and they checked it out, like they, I think they went to the mill and and everything and um you know made sure everyone's getting paid properly and everything's in good practice and things like that um so then they came out with this beautiful um beautiful wool and i just really love the colors of it the colors are really great um there's these ones this is the one the giveaway winner is gonna win um and then there was a blue that i got as well <laughs> and then there's this blue as well and this is the one that you can win on instagram if you go there but i'm really excited to knit it up and see how it goes because i think that's a really i don't know i think that's a kind of a cute story just like they couldn't get away from the <laughs> and that is my thing um i realized last time i didn't really talk a lot about um i mean I talked about everything that I needed to talk about, but I didn't talk about like Christmas or New Year's or anything like that. And I wanted to touch a little bit on New Year's resolutions. I know you're probably already sick of hearing about them. <laughs> I don't have any. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it short. I don't have any New Year's resolutions, but I do have a bit of a goal. Um, I'm not on a yarn diet or anything like that, but I do want to be more conscious of um, just of what's coming in and making sure that um, the yarn that I'm buying is going to be for a project and something that I know I'm going to use and maybe not cast it on immediately but like in the very near future like like this hat um, probably once I'm done whatever pair of socks I get done first I'll start knitting this hat and that'll be a quick fun little project and then it will be done so you know things like that um that's the only thing i'm gonna try and think about a little bit more is do i need what is coming in i have so many projects lined up already i have lots of design work coming up and i have yarn for personal projects that i really want to make um and if i keep just buying the pretty things because they're pretty <laughs> then it, it's harder to um kind of not, not that I wouldn't make the things that I want to make, but I already have the things that I want to make. You know what I mean? So I started a queue on Ravelry. <laughs> so that's my little spiel on New Year's resolution things. Uh, kind of touching on stash stuff. Um, Sam of Hand Me My Knitting is hosting a, what, what did she call it? Create from Stash knit along and it's hashtag create from stash 2020 basically um i think the general i'll make sure i put a link down to it down below here but the general rules are basically making things from any yarn that was bought pre 2020 so anything that's from your stash and you made something with it you can go and enter that knit along um, she's also doing kind of monthly challenges. This is a whole year long knit along. So she's also doing monthly challenges and the challenge for January, um, because she kind of started it halfway through, she didn't want to, um, like it wasn't a knitting challenge per se, but, um, it was to upload your stash to Ravelry. And if you don't have your stash uploaded to Ravelry, you really should take the time to do it because it's fantastic. <laughs> um, you can do all sorts of cool things that I'm not gonna talk about right now. Um, but um, yeah, that was the challenge. And I do already um, upload all of my stash to Ravelry, but so what I did is I, um, I wanted to organize it 
And so I took out all my yarn, I put it on my bed, like all of it from everywhere, which isn't a ton, but I live in a very small place. So it's a lot for where I am. <laughs> so I put it all on the bed and organized everything. And I went through my thing and, and made sure, uh, you know, I did inventory basically. I made sure that the numbers were kind of correct and that what I had, I still had and, and added the things that needed to be added, all that sort of stuff. I also realized how much I just want out of my house. <laughs> I have a lot of yarn um, kind of left over from, even from when Katie and I were making things and, and selling them at markets, like when we were making the big chunky scarves and things like that and selling them, um, I had yarn left over from that still. So it's, my tastes have definitely changed since then. I mean, there's a very big difference when you're buying things um, for to make things for other people, basically, that you're trying to sell and, um, you know, hand dyed things and, and just the different things when you're knitting for yourself or doing design work. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of kind of random balls of things that I don't know because we would... Um, if you look at our first book, Strand, what we would do is basically hold a bunch of yarns together and knit really chunky things, which is really fun. But now I have all this random bits of yarn <laughs> and I just want it gone. Um, it's just taking up too much space and too much every time, you know, it's just one of those things. Every time you kind of look at it, you're like, ugh, like, so it would just feel so much better to have it out of there, which is what I'm going to do. Um, I have two big giant tote bags. Most of it, at some of it, I'm going to put on my Ravelry D stash because there's some things that I do maybe want to keep. Like I don't really have a specific project for it in mind, but if someone was like, I want this for this, pro like if someone really wants it and just wants to reimburse me for it, basically, I'm cool with that. Um, but lots of it is, like I said, those tiny little things. So, um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put them in, I don't know when exactly, <laughs> sometime soon. I'm gonna put them together in like lots. So I'm gonna group some things together and post them on my DStash account on Instagram. Um, that's pipinpin underscore for sale. And there I have some of my samples for sale. I'm gonna be posting some of these yarn lots um, at a, a very big discounts. Like I'm, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be trying to make money off them or even trying to get reimbursed for them. I just, I just want them out of my house. <laughs> so if I do that and things don't sell, they're just getting donated. Like I'm not keeping them. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm very, very, very excited about that. Um, I think this year is just all about organizing, organizing my life. <laughs> Well, I just, yeah, I have the things that I want to make. And I, Justin was trying to, I had one of the bags kind of open in, in the bedroom after I had done it all. And he like starts rooting through them and going through them like, oh, what's wrong with this? Like, oh, what about these three together? And da, 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 da. I was like, yeah, like there's nothing wrong with the yarn. Like it's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just don't want it. Like... <laughs> And that's okay. I'm going to pass it along to someone who can use it. There are many things that I could make with the yarns that I have. There are billions of things that I could make with the yarn that I already have, but I'm not excited about it anymore. So why would I keep this stuff that I'm not excited about if I have things that I am excited about? And I'm not going to stop buying yarn and I'm not going to stop acquiring it. Like I get yarn for design work and things too. So it's not like it's gonna stop coming in. So all that's gonna happen is that yarn that I don't like, that I don't wanna use, it's just gonna sit there forever and ever and accumulate more, I'm sure. Um, so let's just get rid of it. <laughs> uh, Georgia was really happy. I had all these little tiny balls of, of sock yarn that I just, I kept the ones that I thought would go well in my blanket. Um, and I put the rest in a little bin and Georgia came in and looked through them and was super excited. She went and got a little shopping bag and she picked out all the ones that she liked, brought them to her room <laughs> and the rest can go somewhere else. Yeah, 
just feels so nice. So if you're debating, I don't know. I just really love getting rid of things. <laughs> so that was that was my January. That was my January challenge. And it, it's something that I've been wanting to do for, for a while um, because most of my yarn is in my closet. Um, and I'd really been wanting to clear out my closet. But even just having the prompt to do that first little step was nice. It's like, here, do this one thing. This is where you start. So I just started with the yarn. I didn't worry about anything else in the closet. I just did the yarn and it feels really nice. And now I can, now I can focus on, hey, maybe I should do my clothes next or hey, <laughs> there's this, you know, the, there's a whole like cube that is old wedding stuff. Like my old wedding, my wedding dress and like I had a, a stole that I had and like, I don't, I'm going to keep my wedding dress, obviously, but like this thing, I, I don't think I need to keep that. <laughs> I didn't even wear it. So mm. anyways, now I'm just kind of rambling. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Actually, nothing much <laughs> except for snow. There's been so much snow. There's still snow. It's supposed to snow tonight. And then tomorrow, I think it's supposed to turn to rain, but who knows. Um, George has been having a ton of fun. We went and took her tobogganing. Um, it was freezing cold. It was like, I think with the wind chill, it was almost minus 20, which again, I know in Edmonton and Alberta right now, it is way colder than that. Um, but we're dainty little flowers over here. <laughs> And minus 20 is cold. <laughs> I think it was like minus 11. And then with wind trail, it was, yeah. And it was quite windy where we were, but we bundled up and we got our coffees and we were out there for like three hours. So it was, it was really fun. Nobody else was out, which was, I mean, I kind of don't blame them, but you still gotta, you gotta go sledding. It's warmed up quite a bit. Um, I think it's only like minus four now. So that's nice. <laughs> and I think that's it for today hopefully I'll have more to talk about next week um I'm hoping to finish up this pair of socks this week and maybe the body of my sweater maybe cast on something new I don't know start my hat <laughs> uh don't forget to enter in the giveaways um the one here just in the comments below Tell me about your favorite finished object of 2019. And then you can head over to my Instagram account. And that's just a very simple, like tag a friend um, entry kind of thing. And um, win a hat kit. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and liked it. If you, I mean, don't do it if you really didn't like it, but <laughs> if you did like it, just hit that little thumbs up. Anyways, um, thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye.